Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, thanks to the organizers for having me here. Uh, I would be happy to tell you something about my new kind of pet project. I just started a few weeks ago. So it is more related to this Q manifold part of the of this of this lovely workshop. And what is my general idea? So ah, I have to put come on, it was working. No. Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's working. Thank you. Okay, so my basic idea is that I start with something I call graded vector bundle over a graded manifold. And I take its sheaf of sections. That is for each open subset of the underlying manifold of M. This is a Z graded vector space. And there is the algebra of functions on my graded manifold over U acting on my Z graded vector space. Uh, I will tell you more about all this data later. And my main goal is to have some R bilinear bracket on this graded vector space. So I take two sections, global sections of my, my graded vector bundle, and it spits out new sections of a graded vector bundle. And it is supposed to have a degree L, meaning that it uh, shifts degrees of the inputs by L. Together with some pairing, meaning that it takes two sections, spits out a smooth function on my graded manifold and an anchor map, such that for L equal to zero ordinary vector bundles and ordinary manifold, this reduces back to an ordinary current algebra. So this should be some graded generalization of current algebra, such that there, there are some nice non trivial examples of this structure, of course. And we can do in some reasonable sense, graded version of generalized geometry using this structure. So this is my motivation, my goal, what I want to achieve. And now I start to telling some basic facts about these objects I use. So, so what are graded manifolds for me? For, so, so graded from the beginning means Z graded. All the time I just drop out Z for convenience, so everything is Z graded. For me, graded objects are sequences of ordinary objects labeled by, by Z. And morphisms between these two objects are usually just sequences where phi j maps from Vj to Wj. So in my description of graded objects, there are no direct sums of these components. There are no inhomogeneous elements. So every element always has well-defined degree, and I use simplify notation. I just write V is an element of V whenever V is in some of these components for some J, which I then call degree of, of V. Uh, in this way, using this formalism, you can obtain all your favorite categories. For example, a category of graded sets, where these sequences are just sequences of sets, graded vector spaces, where these sequences are sequences of vector spaces, sequences of abelian group with ring. It's more complicated, right? of course, because not of the, they are not rings except for V0. But in this way, you can obtain whatever you want. And most importantly, uh, you have a category of graded commutative associative algebras. And I always assume that they have a unit of degree 0. So I denote it like this. And if you have, if you have some nice category, you can consider sheaves on some topological space valued in this category. Uh, and by that, I simply mean I consider uh, functors from the category of open sets. This opposite means just it's a con contravariant functor to this category. And if this category is nice enough, I can impose, uh, impose some, some uh, usual uh, monopre sheaf and gluing axioms for my sheaves, and in this way, I obtain a category of sheaves on topological space X valued in this category of graded commutative associative algebras. And if you have sheaves, you can deny, define stalks of sheaves. And if you have stalks of sheaves, you can define graded locally ringed spaces, which are just sheaves uh, valued in graded commutative associative algebras, such that 
all its stouts are graded local graded rings. So you have to define what this local graded ring, but basically there is nice definition achieving that. And then you obtain category of graded local ring spaces where morphisms are just pairs, where always this first element of the pair is just a continuous map uh, between two topological spaces and phi star is a pullback from, this is called structure sheaf uh, of the second graded local spaces to push forward sheaf of the first, uh, first uh, sheaf. With some locality condition, meaning that this map somehow induces map which preserves some uh, ideals, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Does this mean that for you, the polynomial algebra is not graded? Because it's the direct sum of- uh, No, numbers. I'm not saying that something is not graded. I just don't look at things in this way. Of course, symmetric algebra is graded because okay. you can define, you can take symmetric algebra, let's say of, of ordinary vector space of grade or, or of even of degraded vector space, and then define these components one by one. Just I'm, I'm taking my, my j component is I take polynomials of degree j. And in this way, I can define algebra. Okay, but you don't sum them. I don't sum them because I don't need to. Okay. And in this way, I avoid some problems, for example, with the dual space, because if you take dual space of direct sum, you don't get uh, direct sum, you can direct product. So it's just a formalism, nothing too serious. It's like rings on projective space, or forms of projective space, right? They're homogeneous polynomials, but you don't want to really sum. I just work with homogeneous yeah. elements and that's it. I don't need to sum them. But in principle, it's nothing too serious. And so, and to all important example of graded local ring space, uh, it's a graded domain. So I take sequence of non-negative non -negative integers such that their sum is finite. And for each open subset of R and zero, I can define a great local ring space, which I denote like this as follows. So I kind of consider a graded vector space where I take out, take out this zero part. So I throw it away and I only take for non-zero, this should be K no equal to zero. Uh, I take R to the power N, K, N of K, there should be double R everywhere, the real numbers. And I take this graded vector space and I take its standard homogeneous basis, which I call total basis, because it's just, I take all, all the standard basis elements from all the components and you obtain n star tuple of, of vectors. And then for each, because I want to define sheaf for each open subset of U, this should be some graded commutative algebra. And this graded commutative associative algebra is the algebra of formal power series in these variables with coefficients in smooth function on this V. This N0 means it's because V is a subset of R and zero. And I only assume that these variables commute according to this rule. So uh, they don't commute if uh, they are both of odd degrees, and otherwise they commute. And I call this graded domain over U of graded dimension NJ. Uh, and there is a note, you cannot avoid using formal power series. It's not enough to consider polynomials if you want to obtain a sheaf whose starts are graded local rings. So if you drop this, uh, you just work with polynomial, polynomials, it simply doesn't work. And now what is a graded manifold? So graded manifold of some graded dimension is a graded local ring space such that its underlying topological space is second countable Hausdorff topological space. And there exists something which is called a graded atlas, meaning I, I have some open cover of my base topological space together with a collection of isomorphism in the category of graded, graded local ring spaces, which goes from this sheaf restricted to U alpha to some graded domain over some open subset of R and zero. So this is for me graded manifold. Uh, one can show easily that, in fact, M is an or this underlying topological space is an ordinary manifold. If you just look at the underlying topological maps, underlying these maps, these are, in fact, uh, homeomorphisms, and therefore you obtain an atlas 
uh, on an ordinary manifold, so M is always ordinary manifold. Uh, what I call smooth maps, I just look at morphisms of graded local ring spaces. These are for me graded smooth maps between the manifolds. Uh, in this sense, graded manifolds form a subcategory of category of graded local ring space spaces. And one note: there is a canonical graded smooth map from this underlying manifold to the this big manifold M here where one can view ordinary manifolds as graded manifolds. And therefore you can pull back every function from here to function on here. And in this way, you from every function on the graded manifold, you can obtain an ordinary function on the underlying manifold, which is called the body of the function. And if you want to, so this was really quick, just introduction. And if you want to learn, this is secret advertisement here, this JV, some mysterious guy who wrote a paper on a global geometry of graded manifolds, which was just pre-printed in, in May. Uh, this lo locally, locally it's easy. This locally, this pullback simply forgets everything containing size. And that's it. It's, it's, it's something similar. You can describe it also by quotienting out some ideal. It's, it's the same. There is also some ideal of your algebra of functions on graded manifolds, which you can quotient out to obtain uh, ordinary smooth functions. And this map is uh, precisely the quotient map. So there is, yeah, that's true. OK. And if you want, now I want to define what are what are radial vector bundles. So uh, first, I have to understand what I mean by sheaves of graded modules. So uh, if I have a graded manifold, we can consider a sheaf of graded vector spaces, such that for each u, not only it's a graded vector space, this f of u, but it's also a graded C infinity m u module. So you can act by functions functions on your sections of your sheaf. And of course, there is some condition that sheaf restrictions of your sheaf have to be compatible with the action, meaning you can first multiply, then restrict, or first restrict and then multiply by restriction, and you get the same thing. And this is called sheaf of C infinity m modules. Uh, if you have two sheaves of C infinity f modules, you can talk about C infinity m linear sheaf morphisms, and they can have non-zero non degree, meaning I, they are not just natural transformations of the functors because they can shift degree, but basically they are just collections of maps where the, each of these phi u's goes from f u to g u. Uh, they commute with restrictions, and this has to be a linear map of degree L, meaning that the degree of the image is the degree of the original, original sections plus L. And it has to be compatible with the action of functions here. So this is the action of C infinite MU on FU. And you have to take out F. And because F phi U, sorry, phi U is of degree L, uh, you acquire some sign here. So because this is of degree L, this is of degree F. And you say that this map phi u, this is just a notation, is C infinite mu linear of degree L. And their space is somehow denoted. And in fact, if you take R, uh, L to be 0, then this space forms a space of morphisms from F to G uh, in the category which you called the category of sheets of C infinite m modules. Uh, no, it's, no, there is no difference except for signs. Yeah, they just just might the difference. But it it's it's always with z graded things. It's almost like the ordinary things, but there are some random signs appearing everywhere. So example, example of my C, uh, sheaf of C infinite m modules is very easy. I call it trivial bundle, which will be explained slightly later. So I take finite dimensional grade vector space. And for each open subset, I define just a tensor product of my graded algebra over U with a migrated vector space K over R. So this is just a vector space. Uh, the action of each function is given by this formula here. So a very, very easy formula. So basically, this is generated by function over U times element of K. And I just multiply this element by F. And this is my action. 
the restriction simply restricts this per first first part, which is in Symfony and Mu, using the restriction in the sheaf of functions, and this gives you very nice sheaf of Symfony and modules, which I call trivial bundle. Uh, second, okay. In this case, I'm not going to Theory, the thing that a bundle is a bundle. Yes, it would be a nice statement, which I am not able to still prove in the graded category because uh, there are some problems. So you need to. Just topologically. The problem. I mean, this graded is not important. Sorry. The, problem is, the problem is that they are the, the, the standard proof that every vector bundle is a sub bundle of a trivial bundle, which is called a self one theorem, right? Use this auxiliary metric on your vector bundle, which is not the thing here. So I don't know, maybe there are some alternative proofs of this self one theorem which do not use this auxiliary metric. And there maybe it's true, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. Okay, so my second example, tangent bundle. Okay, so I take for each U, I take a space of graded derivation of my algebra function. Uh, what is that? So each element from here is called vector field of degree x, absolute value of x. If it's a ma linear map from this vector space to this vector space of degree weight of x, and it satisfies this Leibniz rule with respect to the product of functions. Uh, this is C infinite m module, C infinite mu module, because you can no multiply as in the usual say as you do if with your ordinary vector fields. Uh, what is not trivial to describe here is our restriction morphisms because they are only defined using the partition of unity because you kind of if you want to restrict the vector it, but it's the same as in ordinary differential geometry. If you want to restrict the vector field to to local functions, you have to know how to extend functions. And this is uh, this is done using partitions of unity. So this is it's, it's the same here. Uh, but this partition of unity is on M or on the body of M, actually? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, partitions of unity on uh, curly M, on the metaphors. You have to prove that they exist, but they exist in the, in the same way as, as in the ordinary case. The, the, there is a... You have to prove it. It's not just using partitions of unity from the underlying manifold. Uh, you just have to slightly wave hands more to prove that it works if you lift it up upstairs. Uh, there are some nice constructions you can do with, with, with uh, already existing modules to get the new sheaves of modules. So if you take two sheaves of modules, uh, then you can look at this, this space for each U. You define a graded vector space, host, j component. It's a space of degree j, C infinite mu linear map from FU to GU. Uh, and then you have to think a bit that you can actually restrict the map from here to map from replace u by some smaller subset v but there are there is a restriction and there is an action of c infinity m on this space making this into a sheaf of greatly c infinity m modules uh, in fact one can show that this is indeed something which is called internal home which means that somehow there is some adjunction formula using tensor product which you have to also defined, but there is a tensor product of infinite M modules, and this is internal home with respect to this tensor product. And on the, uh, of the utmost importance is the dual sheaf to F, where you take as this second sheaf of infinite M modules, you take infinite M itself, which is trivially infinite M sheaf of infinite M modules, and you obtain a dual sheaf to F. And an example of this she uh, dual sheaf is the dual to tangent bundle, which is called cotangent bundle. Uh, there is another nice construction which is very important to have. So if you have a graded smooth map between two smooth manifolds over some underlying topology, uh, in fact, this has to be always smooth. That's another note. It's by definition continuous, but it always has to be smooth. Uh, then you can push forward shift. So you can start with a shift of C infinite N modules over N, and you can push it, kind of easy to define. Uh, you can act by uh, C infinite M function uh, using this graded smooth map, so you pull the function and act by it here. So you can push forward sheaf of C infinity n modules to to a sheaf of C infinity m modules. And other other way around, you can take sheaf over m, 
and pull it back. Again, using you, uh, you also you have to use the full power of this map, it, not just the underlying map. But you can construct a pullback sheaf. Uh, it's not so easy. It's not so straightforward because you have to sheafify something because something fails to be sheaf. But it works, and one can show that in fact using this inner home, these two functors are adjoint functors, so everything works nicely. And okay, so what are what are now graded vector bundles? So I start with a graded manifold, and I start with a sheaf of infinite and modules, which I suggest suggestively denote as gamma e, and I choose finite dimensional graded vector space, which I call typical fiber of my graded vector bundle. And I require that there is a collection where U alphas are open subsets which uh, uh, cover entire underlying manifold M. And each of, each of these phi alpha is uh, just a sheaf morphism from the restriction of my sheaf to U alpha to uh, this kind of trivial, I call it trivial bundle, that's one of the reason. Um, <clears throat> uh, where this is just, I restrict this sheaf to U alpha and then I construct this sheaf using, using K. And I require this to be sheaf isomorphism and I call this collection local trivialization. And then if I have all this data, I say that gamma E is a sheaf of sections of some graded vector bundle E over M. So I define graded vector bundles using their sheaf of sections. So it's somewhat maybe not non-standard, but is the easiest way how to get to sheaves, uh, how to get to vector bundles. Uh, there is a construction taking your graded vector bundle, which produces a canonical up to deformorphism graded manifold E and some projection from E to M. And there is a definition where you start with just two graded manifolds, surjective map here, and you say, uh, what is the local trivialization? So kind of more standard way to approach this and you arrive the other way around here. So, so it's basically equivalent, but this one is much, much more easier. And examples of vector bundles I already shown you. So trivial bundle, which I denote by M times K, uh, is a vector bundle whose sheaf of sections is exactly this example from the last page. And tangent bundle, of course, is its sheaf of sections is a sheaf of vector fields of migrating manifolds. And this is not coincident with M times K. In fact, if you construct this total space for this vector bundle, you obtain m times k up to the formorphism. So this explains the notation and explains the names. So there are some basic some some basic facts you can do what you can do with graded vector bundles. So you can define their graded rank, which is a sequence of numbers which correspond to graded dimension of your graded vector space. So you collect sequence of dimensions of the components of k and this is your graded rank. As an example, if you take graded dimension of your manifold to be the sequence of NJs, then graded rank of tangent bundle is n minus j here. And this minus j arises from the fact that if you have coordinate of some degree ZA, then this coordinate vector fields have opposite degrees because you, if you act by vector field, you kill these coordinates. So you lower the degree by the degree of the coordinates. And this explains this minus here. Uh, there are some standard tools, standard tools available. So, for example, each of these trivialization map induces a local frame, which is just a collection, finite collection of sections over U alpha, such that every sections on on uh, every subset of U alpha can be uniquely written using this collection of sections. So you can express every sections uniquely as a functional combination of the local frame. So this is, in fact, this is equivalent to local trivialization. As, as it is in the ordinary case. And you can do all the usual algebraic constructions with vector bundles. For example, you can take its dual simply by declaring its space of sections to be dual to the original space of sections. Uh, so for example, if, uh, no, it's not for example, it's just a fact that if the graded rank of your original bundle was this sequence Rj, then graded rank of the dual is R minus J. So, for example, graded rank of cotangent bundle is sequence, just the graded dimension of your manifold. 
Uh, you can define pullback bundle, which is very important because the pullback bundle construction is one of the most important things you can do with vector bundles, and it works here. So you simply declare the space of sections of your pullback bundle to be pullback sheaf of your original sheaf of sections. Uh, and it has nice universal properties. So you can, in fact, define pullback bundle using universal properties, as you can do in ordinary geometry, and everything works fine. You can sum your vector bundles simply by summing uh, the sheaf of sections. You can tensor product them, etc. cetera. Uh, there is some distinguished thing you cannot do in the ordinary case, which is degree shift your vector bundle. So you can, you can take uh, your new space of sections, gamma EL, whose J component is L plus J component of the original sheaves. And this gives you, and then you have to think a bit to how to how to modify the action of functions here, introducing some signs, but whatever. In this way, you can obtain degree shifted vector band but just by declaring the space of sections of your uh, shifted space of uh, sections or the original bundle. And in fact, it shifts you graded rank in this way. So it just shifts you to the graded rank by L here. Uh, you can also invent the notion of morphism of two vector bundles, which is easy. It, it, it's the same as you would do in the ordinary differential geometry if you want to express it using some sections. So what is a vector bundle map? I have two vector bundles over two different graded manifolds in principle. So what is a vector bundle map? It's a pair where this is a smooth map of the underlying manifolds, and there is a map f dagger, which goes between the du duals the other way around. And because they are vector, they are shifts over different uh, spaces, I push forward this, this one. And both of them are therefore shifts over M2. And I, and they are C infinite M2, shifts of C infinite M2 uh, modules. So I can require this to be C infinite M2 linear shift morphism. and. One can show that you can compose such morphisms. There is identity morphism, blah, blah, blah. And therefore, you obtain nicely behaved category of smooth grade vector bundles. Uh, just a note, if the two manifolds, underlying grade manifolds, coincide and your map is an identity, then in fact, this dagger is a transpose of a unique C infinity M1 linear sheaf morphism between, just, between the, just between the sheaf of sections. It's the same as in the ordinary case. It's the completely same story there. We usually drop writing of hat and we identified everything together. And as I told you, uh, the notion of pullback is some, somehow important because it allows, for example, to define you a fiber of a vector bundle, graded vector bundle. So how do you define fiber of graded vector bundle? So I just take a constant mapping valued at M meaning that I take graded manifold, which is modeled over a single point, and there are no, there are no graded coordinates. So it's a very, you know, the sheaf is something like R, uh, yes. And I consider constant mapping this underlying, host underlying map of this graded smooth map is just a map which assigns to this single point, the point M. So this, this is this valued and M. And then I can define fiber of my vector bundle just by, as a pullback bundle by this constant mapping. So I obtain a vector bundle, graded vector bundle over a single pawn, singleton graded manifold, which is in fact a graded vector space. You can identify it with a graded vector space. And this graded vector space is isomorphic to K. So uh, this explains the name typical fiber for K a little bit. And what is nice that for each M, each morphism of vector bundles induces a unique linear map of the fibers, uh, respective of fibers. They should be phi underlined here, because it's underlying map of, of this gradient smooth map. And what is now kind of tricky that, for example, this, this F is not determined by this collection of this induced fiber map, maps on fibers. It's not like in ordinary geometry where this already determines your F uniquely. This is not true here. You can have vector like, bundle morphisms where all these maps are trivial, and the map F itself is not trivial. So. Yeah. So you can see the graded points, super points. That's fine, right? I don't. Yeah, I, I this I don't understand yet. So 
<laughs> yeah, like super points. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, if you if you use concept of super point, then it should be somehow better or great points. Okay, so what is the next ingredient I need to define graded uh, front algebra? Is of course to equip my sections of uh, graded vector bundles by some fiberized fiberized metric. So what is a metric on my on my vector bundle is a map which takes two global sections, gives you another global section, such that, uh, so first of all, it shifts the degree by L. So um, the degree of the resulting function is sum of degrees of two sections plus L. It's graded symmetric of degree L. So there is this sign arising here. And I can use this pairing to induce a map G E from gamma E M to gamma E star M, which is given by this formula. And I require this map to be infinity M linear isomorphism of degree L. So this, first of all, says how it behaves if you plug F times sigma here. So it tells you what happens if you plug F times sigma into the first arg argument of your, of your pairing. And because of the symmetry also in the second one, and it, it requires it to be infinity L a linear isomorphism of these two vector bundles. And then this, this pair is called quadratic vector bundle, maybe quadratic vector bundle of degree L because L is you know, specified here. Uh, and this, this is very brutal consequences for the graded rank. So if you have a quadratic vector bundle of this graded rank, this gives you this constraint on, on the rank, which is very severe restraint. And meaning that not every graded vector bundle admits a degree L metric. So uh, they are even, you can even cook up graded ranks such that it doesn't admit metric of any degree. So for example, you can prove that there are graded vector bundles where uh, you cannot choose some positive definite fiberized metric trick, right? This is used in many proofs in standard uh, geometry that you know that there is a some positive definite fiberized metric on your, radio, uh, on your vector bundle. This is not true here. There is none in some cases. So we cannot use this argument. And so could you go back? Is this a map from gamma EM times gamma EM to a trivial bundle or to gamma EM itself? Uh, so, no, 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 sure. there is a type of use. There should be functions. Okay. Thank you. Can, can, you, can you give me the... So the simplest possible example is to take trivial vector bundle where you cook up the dim graded dimension of your vector space such that this doesn't hold for any L, which maybe is not so easy, but I, I guess if you, you look, I don't know, I think you can cook it up quite easily. Just take a trivial vector bundle where this graded vector space is just R in each copy of some dimension and just show that it can, doesn't satisfy this condition for any L, it should be somehow easy because this basically means that the graded rank is symmetric about, I think, J half, J plus half. Some, some, something like that, you, you can definitely cook, cook up such, such sequence of, such finite sequence of number which never satisfies this condition. And I should give you an example of a quadratic vector bundle, which will be my most important example. So I take Gm plus T star M, but I shift the degree here by L. If you look at the graded rank, so Nj is the graded dimension of M, then graded rank of this guy here is like this. You have to, I told you that the graded rank of tangent bundle is N minus J, and there is plus L here because I shift it. This is graded rank Nj, so graded rank of this graded vector bundle looks like this, and it satisfies the restriction of Rj for L. Uh, there is some, some confusion maybe arising somehow. So for example, if you consider a section here of degree, this degree, it, it, it can be viewed as a pair, x xi, where xi is a vector field, but this degree of this vector field, it's not sigma, but it's shifted by L because there's a shift here. And this form, Xi here is a infinite M linear map from vector fields to functions, which is of the same degree as the section. 
So one has to be slightly careful. So this is really, as I will tell you here, it's really of degree L. And for example, the dual vector bundle can be identified by sum of cotangent bundle shifted by minus L plus dm. Therefore, the section of the dual bundle of degree alpha is a pair where, on the other hand, unlike here, y is a vector field which has the same degree as your section, and eta is a form which is a degree of your section minus L. And you define degree like this very, very simply. So just because this is a map from vector fields to functions, take y, plug it into psi, take x, plug it into eta, put some sign here, and you can show that this is uh, this is a metric of degree L. Why is it a metric of degree L? Because this associated map looks like this. So it's so chosen that this associated map just interchange x and psi. And although it doesn't look like it shifts a degree by L because the result has a degree equal to degree of this. Degree of this is equal by this part to the degree of the vector field, which on the other hand is degree of the original section x psi here shifted by L. So this really shifts degree by L, and therefore it's a metric of degree L. And it's non-degenerate, meaning that this is clearly an isomorphism. Okay, so now to Quran algebraids. So we already have settled up what is a vector bundle, create vector bundle, and what is a metric. And now we want to have a bracket, and I want to have a bracket which takes two sections from gamma em and spit out new section, which is degree, degree sigma, degree sigma prime plus L. And we want the anchor map to govern what happens if you multiply one of these sections by fine, the second one by, by a smooth function. So you went to take out F somehow outside of the bracket, mo modulo some signs, and there, there is a second term then where this anchor map, which maps each section to vector field. So this is a vector field row of sigma acting on a function times sigma prime. And if you count the degrees, so if you count specifically, if you look at the degrees here, you realize that this sigma has to shift degree, uh, this row, sorry, row has to shift degrees by L. So we have observation that, that our anchor should be C infinity M linear map between two vector bundles of degree L. So anchor also have to, has to shift the degrees by L. And then there is another current al algebraic axiom we want to mimic. So if you have a metric of degree K, so K is in principle different from L now, we would like to have some compatibility, con compatibility condition between the, between the bracket pairing and the anchor, which looks like this. So it's basically generalizing what you call invariant uh, pairing with respect to bracket, but because of the nonlinearity, there has to be this term where this row of sigma is acting on this pairing of sigma prime, sigma double prime. And you quickly realize that both sides shift degree by K plus L, so there is no restriction on K yet. So, so we cannot guess the relation of K and L yet. And there is final current algebra, not, not final, except for like Jacobi identity, Jacobi identity. Uh, uh, there is a canonical map you can cook up using your already present structures. So you have anchor, you have a pairing, and you first take an exterior, differenti exterior differential of, of a function. This gives you one form or section of a cotangent bundle, transpose of the anchor moves you to dual of E, uh, and you use this inverse to move back to the sections of E. So this D is in fact mapped from uh, functions to sections of E. And this map is R linear, it's not linear with respect to functions because of this derivation here but it's of degree L minus K, K, sorry. And there is a final current algebra axiom which kind of relates you what happens if you interchange the elements of the bracket and it's not some zero, there's some signs, but it's governed by this map D. So this is the final axiom of, of standard current algebra. And again, both sides you can see that because this shifts degree by K, this shifts degree by L minus K, so this shifts degree by L, this shifts degree by L, Sure, sure, thank you. There should be sigma, sigma prime. I cannot decide all the time whether to use sigmas or psi's. So sometimes, <laughs> so I decided here to make 
with life fair for size to appear somewhere. Thank you. So there are still no restrictions on K. However, you can you can ask, okay, I can shift my related vector bundle, and therefore also the degrees of my operations shift, and I can always degree shift them such that eventually the degree of the bracket and degree of the pairing is the same. It's not the same as the original degree of the pairing and the bracket, but I can always shift it such that uh, L is equal to K. Therefore, from since now on, I can just simply consider just is K equal to L because the other versions of the current algebra where these two numbers differ can be obtained by degree shift. So, and this also ensures that after you fix this, you cannot you cannot shift just shift your vector bundle to change your L. So this kind of means that L is characteristic of a current algebra which cannot be changed just by degree shifting everything. And of course, what is the most computationally complicated part is to actually determine the precise signs everywhere, which I told you now. And there are some guidelines to do it. First of them is, of course, Cauchy sign convention, meaning if you interchange two elements of some degree, you should pay by sign minus one to the product of the degrees. Uh, you want to have nice example, which I have, which is example of degree L of one bracket. So this should give you another hint how to choose the signs. And of course, there is another thing that if you have everything trivially graded and L is zero, you should obtain the usual axioms of current algebra. So here's the result, and I will try to justify the result here. So graded current algebra is a four tuple graded vector bundle anchor metric bracket. Uh, I basically told you just that. So, but this metric is of degree L. This is a symphonic M linear map of degree L, and this is a bracket are building a bracket of degree L. So everything is now of degree L. And we say that this four tuple forms a graded current algebra of degree L if it satisfies axioms. And here are the signs. So this is Leibniz rule. There is a sign. This is kind of natural one because you take out F through sigma. Uh, and this bracket plus sigma has degree. Uh, there's another psi here, sigma plus L. Right, so this is natural sign. This is somewhat in, uh, there is a row head. I will explain here, which is row head, just to save space. This is also quite natural here because you kind of go with sigma, with bracket, which has degree sigma plus L through uh, the pairing with sigma prime, which has degree sigma prime plus L. So this is a sign appearing here. And this is something I didn't tell you about yet. It satisfies the Jacobi, 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 <laughs> Jacobi identity in this form. So it's very natural with no unnecessary signs. There's just one sign here where you commute sigma through sigma prime uh, together with the bracket, which gives you another L here. So this is great Jacobi identity. And there, there, is, there is this axiom saying that if you interchange uh, sigma and sigma prime, uh, there, there is minus, but in, in the graded setting, there is also an additional sign acquired just by interchanging the elements. Then it's governed by this D, and this is also, the, well, this is here. And there is one strange thing that there is appearing this instead of row, uh, there is row head. Uh, you can argue why, do, why don't you define everything with just row head instead of row. Uh, the reason is that this map is not infinite M linear of degree L. It's of degree L, but there is some additional sign, direct, precisely this sign. Mm -hmm. Do you mind what is this? It's not the part. Uh, capital D is written. Uh, yeah. So, so you take function, you calculate its exterior derivative, function on graded manifold. Uh, you obtain a one form on my graded manifold, which is a section of dual bundle. An anchor is met from E to TM. Therefore, transpose is met from T star M to E star. So this goes back to E star and gamma E star. And you use your isomorphism between E and E star 
go back from E star to E. So this goes back to E. So in, in the end, this goes from functions to sections of E. Which is exactly what is here. This is section of E. So this is D acting on a function. This is a section of E. Okay, so these are my axioms. How do I justify uh, my axioms? So I now give you some reasons why those signs were chosen correctly. Is that first I have to tell you just, just a quick reminder what I call differential forms on graded manifold. So one of the ways how to view E forms on a graded manifold. It's just a map which takes p vector fields on my graded manifold and spits out the function. Uh, we say this p form is of degree degree omega. If it shifts the degree by omega, degree of omega, right? Uh, then if you multiply first section by f, you can take it out, but you pay some price because you commute it through something which is degree omega. So you pay Cauchy rule sign basically, right? And there is another sign acquired when you interchange two elements. So you simply interchange two elements of some degrees x i x i plus one. So you pay this sign. Uh, you can interchange them and you pay minus because we are dealing with forms, not with symmetric tenders. And you can show that in fact this forms again a module. In fact, it forms a sheaf of modules. Uh, for p zero, we can identify this with functions. For uh, p equal one, you can define, okay, you can identify this with a cotangent bundle. Uh, <clears throat> you can sum over all p's, uh, and then you can show that there is a product there and making this into graded commutative associative algebra. And on this graded commutative associative algebra, which you can call exterior algebra for graded manifold, you have your favorite uh, operations of forms. So you can exterior differentiate then. Uh, which raises the form degree by one, but it preserves this this degree here. Uh, lead derivative, it sh preserves the p, but it sh raises the degree by the degree of the vector field along q. Differentiate, and there is an, an interior product which lowers the degree by one, and the degree of the form as as in as in this graded uh, vector space, it's modified by x minus one. No, there, there, there is no minus. There should there is, there is no minus one. There is no minus one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about this now. I think there is no minus one here. This is just uh, error. But then these graded objects satisfy your favorite set of relations called Cartan relations or Cartan magic formulas, where all these guys are graded commutators here. Uh, I'm not completely honest with you because there is another degree you have to use to define uh, these commutators. I'm sorry, because there is another grading on the space of forms which is slightly different from this one, which you have to use to define these graded commutators. But whatever, there are some graded commutators with some signs, but they satisfy the the, the Cartan relations in in the form you, you like. And then you can use this to define degree L Dauphin bracket. So what is degree L Dauphin bracket? So I take this vector bundle as before, with the pairing as before. I define a row as simply projecting this pair x xi onto x. And as I told you, this is indeed of degree L because the degree of this vector field x here in, in the target space is uh, in the original space shifted from the degree of the incoming section by L. So, so this is really shifting the degree by L. The degree of this map is, is L, L. And you define this bracket uh, as very similar to ordinary Dorfman bracket, right? But there are some additional signs here. <laughs> That's it. And degree of row L or minus L? Uh, this is of degree L. And I can show you why, just give me a second. I have a remark here showing that this is a degree L. This, this actually raises degree by L, and I can show you how. So if you look at the vector field X as an element of this degree shifted vector bundle, its degree here is lowered by L. Uh, therefore, the degree of X, XY 
commutator, grade commutator of x, y in this vector bundle is sum of, this is the degree of commutator of x, y in the, as a vector field, which is sum of degrees of vector field minus L because of this. And then you can write x as the degree of the section x, psi plus L. This is a degree of section y, eta plus L minus L. So in the end, you obtain indeed that the degree of this commutator in, in, in here is the sum of degrees of the original sections plus L. So it's indeed an uh, operation of degree L. It raises degree by L. Although it's slight, this is slightly confusing because you tend to make mistakes here all the time because you forget about this. Uh, then you can prove that this is graded current algebra just by using Cartan relations. That's completely the same as in ordinary case, except you have to count all the signs correctly. But if you do, do you realize that this is indeed current algebra of degree L. But of course, you can ask where I got these signs from. Right? These are also look like some random choices. Of course, partly because I wanted to satisfy axioms of current algebra. <laughs> or it's actually the other way around. I first found these signs and then I determined the signs of the axioms from it. So how do I choose the signs here? So there is a very nice thing from standard uh, generalized geometry. So I take a map from vector fields to one forms of degree minus L. Right? And in fact, you can then view it as a C infinite M linear map from this shifted vector bundle to, to one forms of degree zero. Then you can, it's actually kind of exponential, but it's just a notation here. I cook up the map of degree zero using this formula. So I simply map X to X and Xi to Xi plus A of X. And this in, defines infinite and linear automorphism of my graded vector bundle of vector degree zero. And then one can show that EA is orthogonal with respect to this pairing. I have, if and only if, this A is actually induced by a two form of degree minus L. So this definite, this basically uh, uniquely up to overall sign uh, says how you define this pairing. So this is the way uh, how I guess the pairing. I write that A is induced by this omega flat. I think I lower in this indices using flat indices using flat. And then you can show which essentially up to some overall sign fixes you the sign in the Dorfman bracket. You can show that this map where A is now induced by some two form is an automorphism of this bracket if and only if this form is closed. So this essentially uniquely fixes the signs in the Dorfman bracket. And in fact, uh, you can show that if you take free form of degree minus L, you can define H twisted degree L Dorfman bracket where you add this term here and it satisfies graded Jacobi identity if and only if this free form is closed. So this is completely analogous to ordinary case. Another argument why this Dorfman bracket is correctly chosen is it is used nicely to describe graded Poisson manifold. So first of all, what is graded Poisson manifold? So I take a graded manifold and fix some integer and I have some bracket on my functions such that it, it is a graded map of degree K. So it shifts degree by K and it satisfies Leibniz rule and Jacobi identity for degree K operation. So this is usually called degree K Poisson algebra, or graded Poisson algebra, it's an old thing. And you say that if you have this on your algebra of Z graded algebra of functions, you call this a graded Poisson manifold of degree K. Uh, similarly to P forms, you can define skew symmetric P vectors, where you just interchange role of T and this term, you, you, you define skew symmetric P vectors. You can also define symmetric P vectors. And the only difference is, the, the only difference is then this sign minus here. You, so you have symmetric P vectors uh, as you have in the ordinary case, but now everything is, just, everything is graded. And you can sum all these great vector spaces. And it, again, you obtain some graded Poisson algebra with some bracket and this bracket is usually called Scouten-Einhus bracket. And 
What is nice that even in the graded setting, uh, this Poisson bracket uniquely corresponds to some two vector, but what is here interesting, uh, it's a kind of peculiar thing, that for even k, the Poisson bracket corresponds to a skew symmetric two vector, and for odd k, it corresponds to symmetric k vector. But in both times, the graded Jacobi identity for the bracket is equivalent to the vanishing of pi with respect to this Skelton minus bracket. So this is kind of what is graded Poisson geometry in a nutshell. And now, ah, there is another, sorry, another intermetro. I have like two, three, four minutes. So, so what is a subbundle? So just, just in a nutshell, what I call by subbundle, I just assume that I have some sheaf of infinite M submodules, meaning that for each U, this is just submodule, and the sheaf restriction of this bigger sheaf restrict to the operations of my small sheaf and make it into a sheaf. This is called sheaf of submodules. And I say it's a subbundle. This L, L is a subbundle of E. If there exists a graded subspace of L and a local trivialization, which is kind of compatible with this, with this subset, so there should there is some typo here. There should be phi alpha gamma L U alpha is exactly kind of this free sheaf of menus generated by L. So this is uh, this is the same as in ordinary case. You just have to have some local trivialization which is adapted to your uh, to your subbundle. And there are some examples. For example, if you have a bundle map over identity, such that if this induced map on fibers is injective or surjective for all M, then you can define kernel subbundle in usual way, an image subbundle, and in this case, if they are inject fiber, if, if, if F is fiberized injective or fiberized injective, they are. What is interesting that what is not true in general, uh, graded geometry is that it is not enough to assume that the graded rank of this l linear map is constant in M. This is not enough. It has to be maximal. It has to be either the rank of the one bundle, with, then it's injective or fiberized injective, or the rank of the other bundle. In this case, it's such a subjective. And there is also a nice construction how to, uh, not a construction, but if you start with a subbundle of some quadratic vector bundle, and then you can simply take orthogonal complement and this defines you a new subbundle always. <coughs> and finally, final justification for my graded Dorfman bracket. So I start with arbitrary map from this time the other way around, from one forms to vector fields of degree L. Again, I can look at it as a degree zero map into the shifted bundle, and I can construct a graph of this map. So I simply look at the graph of this map as a, sub, a subset of gamma E. In fact, you can show it's trivial that it's always subbundle because it's an image of some injective map. It's, it's isomorphic to cotangent bundle. So, so this is a subbundle. And you can then show that this subbundle is equal to its orthogonal complement if and only if it's induced by a bivector which is skew symmetric for even L and symmetric for odd L. So exactly the same thing you had for Poisson uh, guys above. In this case, you write that P is induced by pi using this sharp here. And then you can show that the gra this graph is now involutive with respect to your bracket if and only if it satisfies this condition with respect to Skelton graphic, meaning that graph is a Dirac structure in your graded, uh, in your graded vector bundle, graded quantum algebra, if and only if it corresponds to a graded Poisson manifolds of degree L. And here's the definition of what I mean by Dirac structure is a subbundle which is equal to its orthogonal complement, or sometimes just maximally isotropic, which is depending on the signatures of your pairings, but here is the same thing for this example, such that the space of sections of this subbundle has to be involutive with respect to bracket. I call it called Dirac structure in ordinary differential uh, general geometry also here. So this is another justification that this is fine. This is fine definition of graded current algebra. Uh, and there are some concluding remarks just in time. So you can define what are generalized complex structures in your in your uh, in your grade vector bundle. And you can show that as an example of generalized complex structure, they contain degree L minus L symplectic forms. 
So this is the same as ordinary differential geometry, where you can view symplectic form as a generalized complex structure on Tm plus T star M. You can show that there is some sequence which you can declare exact and therefore uh, talk about exact current algebraids. You can classify them completely the same way as Chevera did for ordinary exact current algebraids. And they are classified by the RAM cohomology group in degree minus L, because I told you that this exterior derivative preserves the degree of form. So in fact, your cohomology kind of is Z graded and each degree you can calculate it separately. But interestingly, one can show that for L not equal to zero, this is in fact trivial. So, so all degree, all closed degree minus L preforms where L is non-zero are in fact exact. Meaning that there is in fact a single isomorphism class of degree L exact current algebra, right? which is nice. For, for L zero, that's not true. Uh, and then some future work. So for example, you can now try to work out because in standard case, uh, current algebras originally, in fact, appeared as Manian triples for Lie algebraids. So it was the original purpose of current algebraids, uh, which means that we can try to find a suitable notion of graded Lie algebra and show that it can be used to construct graded current algebraids. Uh, another big, no, not big quest, but trying to do is that uh, it's in the name of this conference that there are some important vector fields of degree one, which square to zero. Uh, manifold, graded manifold with such QR called Q manifolds. And we would like to unify them into this generalized geometry, graded generalized geometry picture. So somehow, because you know, Poisson structure is a Dirac structure. So we should have some more compatible Q with, with, with Poisson structure to obtain PQ manifolds or QP manifolds. You know, Poisson structure where graded manifolds with Poisson structure where Q preserves the Poisson structure. And of course, it would be nice to find <laughs> find some actual reason besides that it can be done to define graded current algebra to find some applications, for example, in, in, in string theory. And I hope they will just appear somehow themselves in the time. They always do. They always do. With, they did with standard current algebra. So please uh, uh, keep eye on, on archive. I should publish the paper about this soon, meaning in like two years, hopefully. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Just a poll. First of all, uh, great by algebra uh, during the first in the lecture of um, Alexander Borden in the first week. Yeah, so it's done. Perfect. Second, just to relate this to Q manifolds, uh, there is a nice description of Zimmer Reutenberg that every current algebra is a degree two symplectic yes. manifold, right? With, uh, with a Hamiltonian of degree three. Actually, this idea was also used by Alexander Warren, as mentioned before. And this can be done in this context either. And uh, if you do this by use of the standard uh, derived bracket, it will justify all your signs. So there's no problem to, to see what kind of sign appears. It's just general technique. OK. Uh, and the last, uh, the answer maybe to Maxim that indeed, <laughs> every, every great packet bundle is uh, subbundle in a projective model. <laughs> Uh, questions? Okay. Uh, maybe I need just ask. Uh, so, besides this one, we talked about it. Do you have any empirical examples? Well, this is also kind of a big example, right? We can only give an example of great, um, great current modules. Besides some very trivial examples like graded Lie algebra, graded quadratic Lie algebra, so it will be essentially over a point. The answer is no. Yeah, so I don't have yet. But it's the same with 
ordinary quantum algebra there are not so many examples besides the open bracket and maybe transitive current algebra it's where uh, they come from some, some reduction in this work of yeah, they're just usual there are not there are not so many examples even for standard quantum algebra besides uh North Mark. Mm -hmm. Once twisted one solution to the master equation, which is linear, it's not a 